Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Eskenasi. Uh, I'm Joshua Eskenasi. I'm the Director of Neurosurgical Oncology at the University of Texas Health Neurosciences and the co-director of the Gamma Knife Program. And the current webinar is going to address several of the uh, issues and information regarding Gamma Knife radiosurgery at our institution. Gamma Knife radiosurgery um, is a very important advancement in the treatment of patients with several brain diseases. The utility of radiation to treat cancer was recognized shortly after the discovery of x-rays. But prior to the development of stereotactic techniques that are used in stereotactic radiosurgery, the radiation was delivered to the cancer. And in addition to delivering the radiation to the area of abnormality, a significant amount of volume surrounding the normal tissue or many parts of the brain were also radiated. And in 1950, this is just an image of the first patient treated with the uh, stereotactic art. And since then, there are very important advances. Gamma knife radiosurgery is well established. It's a method used to treat brain tumors and several other conditions of the brain. Our program has treated over 5,000 patients since we acquired the first gamma knife in the region almost 30 years ago. Gamma knife radiosurgery is a very precisely focused beams of radiation that are directed to areas within the brain which require treatment. Doing the treatment in such a way minimizes surgical risks. There is no need for a surgical scar it is very minimally invasive, and there is no pain associated with the procedure. The gamma knife is a unique treatment method that delivers extremely focused radiation beams to the target of the brain. And as you can see from this picture, all of these beams converge in a very focal point, focusing the treatment on a very specific area and avoiding treat treating other areas of the brain. The shape and the dose of the radiation is optimized to hit only the target that we desire without damaging surrounding healthy tissue, which is very important for our patients. There are several conditions that we treat, and this is our experience in our center. The volume of uh, lesions that we treat, primarily we have a very large number of patients that have brain metastasis. Many patients with primary brain tumors that have excellent results with this technique. Pituitary adenomas, those are tumors very close to areas of vision. And in many cases, those cannot be removed completely. And gamma knife is an excellent option. Meningiomas that are one of the most common tumors in the brain. Acoustic neuromas that present with hearing loss. And it is a very good procedure for this treatment, for these uh, tumors. Trigeminal neuralgia, which is a very dramatic pain in the face for many patients. Gamma knife radiosurgery has made remarkable improvements in the treatment and the quality of life of these patients. And many vascular diseases such as arteriovenous malformations that are very difficult to manage with surgical resection can be very well addressed with gamma knife. This is just an example. This is a patient that has metastatic lung cancer Unfortunately, we found that the patient has a large metastasis. This is a very deep area of the brain. And doing an operation or a craniotomy would be very risky in this patient. Therefore, the patient was treated with the gamma knife radiosurgery technique. As you can see, one month after the treatment and three and six months after the treatment, the lesion has completely gone away. The brain swelling has resolved and the patient has continued to do well with his systemic therapy. Another treatment with a very large metastasis with a lot of brain swelling in a patient with cancer of the colon. And doing the gamma knife radiosurgery, we were able to reduce the tumor volume by almost 80%, and this tumor did not grow subsequently. We did not have to do an operation, and the patient only underwent an outpatient procedure, which I will be describing shortly. In addition, many patients with cancer, as you know, they will develop metastasis in the brain. But most of the metastasis can be treated in one single session. We try to avoid whole brain radiation, which is giving a very low dose of radiation to all of the brain. 
including the memory areas and speech areas, because we have learned that whole brain radiation causes significant memory problems and cognitive dysfunction affecting the quality of life of patients. Therefore, we prefer to treat patients with radio surgery in the majority of the cases. Recently, we have found, and many centers have published, that there is no limit to the number of metastases. For instance, in this patient with metastatic lung cancer, the patient had over 15 metastases. And we were able to treat all of the metastases in one session. It is important to know that in particular number of cases or in specific cases, more than one treatment separated at least by one month may be required. But 95 to 99% of the patients only require one treatment. Even metastases that are in areas that we cannot operate. For instance, this is an area called the brainstem, a very deep metastasis. The patient is having a lot of problems. He has developed swelling and difficulty with his vision and swallowing. And we were able to treat this tumor using the gamma knife radiosurgery, allowing the patient to continue with his treatment for his cancer. Meningiomas are one of the most common tumors of the brain. These are benign tumors, but unfortunately they can grow and they can cause symptoms. In some areas, they can present close to the optic nerves or the areas of vision, close to the brainstem, in the cerebellum, or any area around the brain. These tumors can grow, and many times we find these tumors for other reasons. And then the question is, what should we do? Gamma knife radiosurgery has proven to be an excellent treatment option for patients with meningiomas that are small to medium size, and even in areas that surgery would be very difficult to do, such as in the cavernous sinus or other areas of the brain where a surgical resection or a craniotomy would cause a lot of problems. Using the gamma knife radiosurgery in more than 90 or 90% 90 of the cases, we can control the tumor and prevent the tumor from growing. Trigeminal neuralgia is a condition that we see very common when patients present with lancinating pain in one side of the face that can affect their quality of life. This pain can get worse with brushing the teeth, with swallowing, even the air contacting the skin. There are several treatment options, but gamma knife radiosurgery over the last two decades have proven to be an excellent treatment option. As you can see here, we present a case of an MRI of the brain, and this is the brainstem, and this is a trigeminal nerve. This is the nerve that we can identify using very advanced MRI techniques. And once the nerve is identified, we can give a very focal dose of radiation to the nerve to help patients control their pain. We have expanded our practice and recently we have been treating patients with recurrent glioblastoma with excellent results. We have proven that this is a very safe procedure and many other centers are starting doing this treatment for our patients. For many patients after uh, the study, we have treated over 200 patients now with glioblastoma and many other gliomas with this technique. It is important to mention that this is not the standard treatment for glioblastoma and it is not the first line of treatment. This is for patients that have tumor recurrence after other treatments have been done. We have recently also published our experience where we have found that some patients may benefit from others or they may benefit more from this technique, depending on the molecular composition of the tumor. Therefore, at UT Health Neurosciences, we personalize treatment for patients and we perform next generation sequencing on the tumors to better know how they will behave and to identify which patients will benefit more from our treatments. This is a case of an acoustic neuroma or a so-called schwannoma. These are tumors that can present in many nerves of the brain. This is the most common in the nerve of hearing where patients typically present with dizziness, hearing or ringing in one ear. We can identify the tumor and an operation for these tumors doing a craniotomy while it's very feasible requires a couple of weeks of recovery and there are associated complications from the operation. Using gamma knife radiosurgery, we have found in many other centers excellent results 
in preventing the tumor from growing and achieving long-term control for these patients with a minimally invasive treatment. In terms of vascular malformations or AVMs, these are abnormal vessels that form in the brain. And unfortunately, these vessels can rupture, causing an intracerebral hemorrhage, or they can also cause seizures. They can also cause brain swelling, and they are very difficult to treat. Gamma knife radiosurgery has shown to be an excellent treatment modality for many cases in combination with other techniques or just as a single treatment. And this is just an image of a cerebral angiogram where we can see the lesion and we can select the area of abnormality very precisely to deliver a radiation dose. We have expanded the use of the gamma knife for several other cancers as a multi-modality treatment for instance, in nasopharyngeal carcinoma, as a boost after the treatment of after the standard of care treatment to prevent the tumor from going. And we have been very successful using this technique. I want to mention that the gamma knife radiosurgery, uh, it's a very multidisciplinary treatment team. This is a picture of uh, myself with Dr. Blanco, uh, uh, one of the radiation oncologists, and Magda, who's been working. Uh, with us for many decades, involving neurosurgeons, radiation oncologists, medical physicists, many neuroradiologists that support our team, as well as dedicated nursing staff that are committed to provide the best care for our patients. There are many ways of doing the uh, procedure, but basically the treatment steps are four. The first part of the treatment after the patient comes early in the morning is the frame attachment. After the frame placement, which I will uh, explain shortly, the patient undergoes an imaging technique, either an MRI, a computer tomography, or an angiography, depending on what kind of tumor or lesion we're interested in. The treatment is planned in the computer software, and the treatment is delivered. This is a head frame placement. This is just a picture. We use this Lexel head frame. And the frame allows us to accurately pinpoint the target to be treated in the brain. There are many numbers on each, each coordinate on many axes that will tell us exactly in a three-dimensional space where the lesion is located. The frame is lightweight and is attached to the head using four pins with very local anesthesia to ensure the radiation is directed with precision to the target. The frame prevents the head from moving during imaging and treatment. And it is a very straightforward procedure. This is a picture of a patient after the frame is placed. As you can see, she's laying in bed very comfortably. There is no need to shave any of the patient's hair. Patients do not need to discontinue anticoagulation or any of their medications. We provide medication before the head frame to reduce some of pa the patient anxiety and discomfort. And the patients are monitored throughout the entire procedure and recovery by a specialized nurse. I am very excited to mention that we uh, recently acquired the uh, Electa Gamma Knife Icon, which is the most advanced machine that is available. And uh, with this technique, there is a option to not require a frame. And I will go over, over those details. This is a thermoplastic mask and a combing CT. This is a machine that has a computer tomography integrated into the gamma knife. And the patient comes early to the hospital and instead of having the frame, for some patients that are not comfortable undergoing the frame placement, we uh, custom made a thermoplastic mask and the machine has an infrared camera that is tracking the patient movement. These cases can only be done for small tumors or for patients that are very cooperative. And it is important to um, mention to your treating physician if you're a candidate for this uh, procedure, but we will let you know if we rather do a frame or to do a mask. But as you can imagine with the mask, there are no need for placement of the four pins. Uh, but again, as I said, the frame has worked excellent and uh, we don't usually have any problems doing either of the techniques. 
as I mentioned, after the frame or the mask is uh, placed, we will ask the patient to travel to either get an MRI, a CAT scan, or an angiography, depending on the lesion of interest. This would allow us to determine the exact size, the shape, and the position of the target in relationship to the frame. A coordinate box is placed on the head frame to provide reference points on the images for the treatment plan. And finally, we will sit down in the computer, this is Dr. Blanco, and we will look at the images and individually design a plan for each patient. We work together to develop a plan in a, specific, in a specially designed computer and calculate how the treatment will be performed. After we finish with the planning, we will talk to the patient again and we will show him the images and we will be able to tell exactly the duration of the procedure. Following that, we will then all agree with the treatment. The patient will lie comfortably on the treatment couch, as you can see. The couch will then move into the dome section of the unit. You don't have to move during the procedure. You just have to lay comfortably and the machine will do all of the work. The procedure is silent. There is no noise and it's painless. You will be awake and will be able to communicate at all times. You can also listen to your favorite music from your phone during the treatment, or you can ask for specific music if you don't bring your own phone. After the treatment, the frame will be removed. The procedure is very well tolerated for all patients with minimal risk. Some patients may experience a mild headache or my minor swelling where the frame was attached. Band-aids are placed and the patient will then go home a few hours after the procedure, after they are monitored in the recovery area. We will then obtain a routine follow-up image every few months or years, depending on the condition and the time that has passed between the treatment. And we will follow you closely to make sure the tumor does not grow and to ensure that no other tumors develop. If you have any questions or any information, please call the number, the number uh, seen on the screen. You can also email our team or myself, and we will do our best to provide the best treatment for our patients. Thank you so much.